Hello, good people. Welcome back to some quarantine content. Uh, this video is gonna be interesting and you may be wondering why. Well, we have two new coolers from Zalman. I know, right? Zalman. So this is the CMP S20X, the big boy, the dual tower design thingy. And this is the CMP S17X. I hope I got that right. Anyways, these brand new coolers sort of popped into the radar when we started catching a few videos and articles, having them shown either matching or beating some of the most popular air coolers available on the market today. And yes, that does include the Noctua NHD15 and the U12A. So upon popular request, we finally have them here. So can these new CNPS models really be the best of the best? Even during quarantine, everyone here was anxious to see the results. Like really, really anxious, since Zalman has more than 20 years of cooling experience, and they have some pretty big claims about these coolers too. But does that really matter? Let's find out after this. Power up your PC with Be Quiet's Straight Power 11 Platinum Series, featuring 80 plus platinum efficiency, a fully modular design, high quality Japanese capacitors, and a silent wings fan that's optimized for airflow and silence. Choose Be Quiet and your components will thank you. All right, so let's start at the top of things with pricing. And like most high-end air coolers, these will burn a hole through your pocket. The CNP S20X is $100 US, so the same as the Noctua NHD15 Chromax, while the CNP S17X is $70, which hits somewhere between the Noctua U12S and the U12A, or aligned perfectly with the U14S. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'll be addressing these coolers as the S20X and the 17X. Now, for the looks, well, opinions about that will be super personal. I like the stealth approach Noctua, Be Quiet, and Sight take with their coolers, but if you want something with RGB, then Zalman has you covered. Or if you don't like all that bling, you can just turn off the illumination in your motherboard software. Both these coolers have very similar designs with the S17X being much more compact. It uses a pretty traditional design with a very interesting open frame 140 millimeter fan. For size comparison, it's a little bit bigger than the Noctua U12. Taking a look at the fin array, Zalman created what they call a 4D corrugated design that leads to a more efficient airflow through the aluminum fins so the fans don't have to produce as much static pressure. Oh, and that copper area is just aluminum with a simple electroplating, but it does look pretty cool. The five heat pipes run down into a base that's polished to a mirror finish. Now about the S20X, well, it's basically a supersized S17X with dual cooling towers and a pair of fans. Instead of five heat pipes, it uses six slightly larger ones that run up into the fins and from a size perspective, it's comparable to the Noctua NHD15, but it's also a bit taller. One of the things I really wanna focus on are the unique fans Zalman's using here, and of course, the RGB will be the first thing you'll see. The illumination comes from an area in the middle, which is super bright, and it's kind of impossible to show the individual LEDs uh, on the center, but it's also kind of painful to look at as well. Uh, the light then spills into a four clear plastic area. There's a couple of issues here. First of all, the S20X and the 17X use a non-standard mounting mechanism, so it's impossible to switch them out for higher performance fans. Also, you'll need to mount them onto fan guides yourselves, and that involves a bunch of small screws, a ton of flimsy plastic, and some metal clips. It's a total, total pain in the butt, guys. Speaking of installation, prepare to be completely overwhelmed here, because when you open the box and start taking out the hardware, there are tons of small bits and pieces that are needed to put these coolers together and none of the bags are labeled, so that just adds some confusion. Like I said, just a single fan needs a lot of pieces, but that's just the tip of the iceberg, especially if you're using an AMD or lower end Intel system or a Z or H series motherboard. Let's start with mounting this on an X299 board since that's the simplest, sorta. First up, you screw in four standoffs and then mount a cross plate with four bolts. Now you can either do this vertically or horizontally, depending on the configuration you prefer. Just watch out, the plate has holes for all Intel sockets and both positions will actually fit on a 2066 system, but only one will allow you to properly mount the cooler. Just make sure to use the outer holes and everything will go fine. The next part is the same for every installation on AMD and Intel. You'll need to carefully align the screws with these threaded studs, which is pretty straightforward on the S17X since they're easily accessible. Now for the S20X, you'll need longer Phillips head screwdrivers and the screws are magnetic. So threading them between the towers is a complete or a total 
pain in the butt to be more transparent. Not only that, but shame on Zalman for not including a screwdriver with a $100 cooler, like pretty much everyone else does. After that, it's just a matter of mounting the fans and dealing with the mess of cables coming out of them. Remember, each fan has two wires, one for the RGB illumination and the other for running the fan itself. Moving on to AMD mounting, and this is where things get even more complicated. Now, the first thing you'll need is the world's most complicated backplate. Basically, this one component is made to fit AM3, AM4, and all non hdt Intel motherboards. To actually make it compatible with any platform, you'll need to slip in these small plastic side caps and vertical nuts. The next step is to apply what Zalman calls their loading block, which is a sticky pad that makes sure the backplate doesn't kind of fall off and it sort of gets a flush install to the motherboard. If you thought the process was overly complicated, check this out, guys. You'll need to install four tiny washers, screw down the standoffs, position the cross brace and secure that in place. Guys, at this point, I was wishing for Noctua's or Be Quiet's process. Finally, you just have to screw down the heatsink and that's it. <sighs> so, with all of that being done, what about clearances? Well, both coolers have fan clips and that can easily be used for avoiding PWM heatsinks and taller memory. But there is a bit of a problem here. As you can see, even with the shortest memory I have here, it causes the fan to be pushed far upwards. That'll certainly cause a problem for some cases and it's something to keep in mind. And now, the moment that you've all been waiting for, the results. Now, just a friendly reminder for folks who are wondering about our testing methodologies, I'll leave a link in the description down below that goes through every single detail, step by step. You're welcome. Kicking things off and, oh my, both coolers actually post some of the best numbers we've seen. It's actually amazing to see the S17X keep up with a bunch of dual fan designs, while the S20X takes a crown and even overcomes the D15. One thing I want you to keep your eyes on is how the S17X stacks up with the U14S since both of those are single fan 140mm designs that cost about $70. At default fan profile, they're pretty quiet too, but it's obvious that the S17X needed to ramp up its speeds a bit higher to compensate for its smaller size. That S20X on the other hand is really, really impressive guys. Pushing fan speeds to 1000 RPMs shows some interesting results with the S20X improving over the stock test while the S17X actually sees higher temperatures. The reason for that is pretty simple. At the default fan speed profile, the smaller cooler ended up running over 1000 RPMs while the S20X ran below that speed. The noise readings prove the situation. Even though the S20X takes the crown in temperatures, it does start getting quite a bit louder. But seriously, to the naked ear, it's literally just as loud as the D15, and that's pretty impressive. The S17X, on the other hand, not too great since it got beaten by the U14 in both temperature and noise in this test. Bumping up to full speed, and the improvements aren't really all that worth a while. Personally, I think this is because both coolers were already operating near their peak efficiency at stock CPU speeds, so pushing more air through them wasn't going to do that much. So this is the first sign of concern. As Zalman fans start heading above 1200 RPMs, the amount of noise being produced increases exponentially, and that's likely due to their unique design. The Noctua coolers are clearly superior here. Now before I get into the overclocking results, I do want to quickly sum up the stock CPU results because Zalman's performance on our 10980 xc can be used as a great representation on how the S17X and the S20X would stack up on lower wattage processors. For example, I'm sure that the results will be very similar to these on a Ryzen 9 uh, 3950X or a 9900K. But overclocking the 10980XC separates the men from the boys. And I should also mention that this pushes thermals above what the smaller S17X is rated for. Well, the first shock is the S17X held on for all of its life and actually cooled the CPU to a point where it didn't throttle. But would I want my processor regularly chugging along 101 degrees? Probably not. On the other hand, the S20X ended up beating the Dark Rock Pro, but the D15 started to pull away with this one. Both coolers also started to get pretty loud, with the smaller one running at 100% fan speed the whole time. It's important to note that the U14S got similar temperatures, but it's much quieter than the S17X. The S20X, the bigger boy, hits a point where it became the loudest cooler in this test. Running the fans at a constant RPMs has the S20X delivering really respectable results, but they're still not good enough to pull ahead of Noctua's Beast. And that S17X, well, 
It's overwhelmed at this point, but that was expected. The last test just repeats what we've already seen, and with that, I think it's time to wrap this up. So is the CNP S20X, the big boy, a Noctua killer? Well, that actually depends on how you look at things. You see, for lower thermal loads, it actually ends up beating the D15 while operating at similar decibel levels. But as you start to increase the heat load, the D15 sort of stays ahead while remaining quieter. If you want bragging rights for having the best RGB air cooler on the block, this is it. Just be mindful that Zalman's competition is miles ahead when it comes to ease of installation. Now, what about the smaller CNP S17X? I can't believe I actually remember this off the top of my head. But anyways, it offers overall great performance and good acoustics as uh, you know, we haven't come across an air cooler that offers RGB lighting. Now, if you don't really care about all the RGB goodness and all that stuff, and if you don't mind the color scheme or the way how it looks, you're actually better off with the Noctua U14S. I mean, sure, it's that color that you'll have to get used to, but for $70, it's an overall great option. Uh, but there's also the Site Fuma 2 that's uh, around $60, which offers heaps of value, uh, provided that you can actually find one on sale. So on that note, I think it's time to wrap this up. Uh, let me know if you guys are interested or if you have any other air coolers uh, that you'd like us to check out. Uh, we'll definitely add them to our testing. I'm Ibra with Hydro Canucks. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and spend responsibly, my friends.